Hey everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So today we'll be solving the problem count triangles from the court forces round 643. So the problem states will be given A, given B, given C, and given D. You gotta find X such that it lies between A and B. You gotta find Y such that it lies between B and C. And I gotta find Z that lies between C and D. And you gotta form this triplet. And in doing so, you gotta count how many triplets are there such that they form degenerate triangles. So what does degenerate triangles means? The triplets that satisfy this condition like X plus Y should be greater than Z. X plus Z should be greater than Y. Y plus Z should be greater than X. So this is the question and you got to print the count of triplets. So if you check out the constraint, the value of N is 5 into 10 to the power 5. So if you write an N cube solution, that will TLE. Even if you write N square log N, that will also TLE. So you got to think of something better. So let's see how can you solve this. So the problem can be solved using two pointer technique and a bit of maths. So what you can do is initially stand Z over here and stand Y over here. So we know one thing, if I'm able to find X and Y that is greater than Z. So that will eventually satisfy the condition because these are two smaller values which are adding up to give greater than Z. So eventually Y plus Z will also be greater than X and X plus Z will also be greater than Y. So if I only check for this condition, so all the other conditions will be satisfying. So initially I'm taking 10. So Z is 10 and my Y is 5. So what is the minimum possible value of X that I require? So the minimum possible value of X that I require is 6. So can I get this 6? No, I cannot get because X can only range between 3 and 5. So this is not possible. So what you do is you move the Y pointer to 1 ahead. That is 2, 6. So we are now standing at 6. So now what is the minimum possible value of X that you need? So that on adding to 6, you get it greater than X. So the minimum possible value is 5. So now you can check out that there is a possibility of taking 5. So you can take 5. So you know for 6, you can take 5. So the triplet formed is now 5, 6, 10. So this is one of the triplets formed. But what can you take for the other values? So if I do not move Y and think theoretically, so this was something as 6 plus 5 was just giving greater than as 10. So if I'm increasing this value as 7 because the value to the right will be one more and the next value will be two more. So if I increase this value to 7, so can I take 5? Yes, I can take 5 because I've already increased this value. So eventually this entire value will be greater than 10. Can I take 4? Yes, I can take 4. Why? Because I've decreased 1 from 5 and I've increased 1 from 6. So eventually the net increase or decrease is 0. So 7 and 4 can be taken. So 7 can be clubbed with 5 and 4 as x and that can be taken. For 8, whom can we take? For 8, 5 can be taken, 4 can be taken, 3 can be taken. For the same reason, because 8 plus 5 will be greater, 8 plus 4 will also be greater than 10 and 8 plus 3 will also be greater than 10. So for 9, whom can you take? 5, 4, 3. Can you take 2? No, because 2 will lie towards the left of 3. But we are said that x should always lie in between 3 and 5. So you cannot take. For 10, what can you take? 5, 4, 3. So you can take this. So it's not possible that you iterate and find out because that will eventually be something as n square. So you got to find something better. So how do you find this 5? That is very easy because you're standing at z. So the value of z is 10. So the value of y is 6. So the value that you need is plus 1. Because 10 minus 6 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So you got 5. So I know 5. Right. So this corresponds to 1. So this corresponds to 2 values. This corresponds to 3. This corresponds to 3. This corresponds to 3. Now why 3? Because we know the triplets can be 5, 7, 10, 4, 7, 10. Similarly, 3, 8, 10, 4, 8, 10, 5, 8, 10. So this is the reason the count of triplets are 1, 2, 3, 3, 3. Now let's find a maths to add up to the answer. So I know that these are nothing but the sum of consecutive numbers, right? So how can you find this out? So you know, at first you are requiring one number. So how did you find that? So you found 
x to be 5 and what was the rightmost condition that was 5 so this was also 5 so the first number is 1 for sure because the extremist condition was 5 and b was also 5 so first you got one number so you know apparently when you're moving it is increasing by 1 so you're increasing 1 to it so 1 plus 2 plus 3 but at a step it has to stop so when did it stop so this was nothing but 3 now what is this 3 this is nothing but the range because the total numbers over here that can be taken is 3. So you have already taken this. You cannot take 4 numbers. So after this, you had repeated of things. So you can just simply use maths. So what is the maths that you will use? So you know the count of numbers still here is 1. So since 5 was over here, so the numbers left were 2 to be taken because the numbers left are 4 and 3 that sums up to be 2 numbers that can be taken. So you know from 6, you can only take 2 numbers. So that is the reason I will take 2 numbers. So I know till 2 numbers, I will get 1 plus 2 plus 3. So L will be 1 and R will be 3. So if I know L as 1 and R as 3, I can find the sum out. So the sum will be nothing but 1 plus 2 plus 3. And after this, I know the remaining numbers are nothing but 2. Again, very obvious because 9 and 10 are remaining. And I know the last number was 3. So the remaining numbers are 9 and 10. That sums up to the count of 2. And what is the last number? 3. That will be repeating. So you know 2 into 3 will add up to 6. So after this, you can simply add up 6 to your answer for 9 and 10. And this will be nothing but sum of consecutive numbers. So 6 plus 6 will give you answer as 12, which has to be added to the answer. So this is how you found out for 6. So I can say this is nothing but an O of 1 operation if you write some maths. So after I do the dry run, I will show you how do you write the maths. So now you know that you have done for 10. So let's move the value of Z to 11. So can I take 6 or 11? No, because if I take 6, the maximum possible value of X that I need will be 11 minus 6 plus 1. So this tends to 5 plus 1, that is 6. So you'll require 6 plus 6, which will give you 12. And so it will get more than 11. But I cannot have 6 because the maximum I can have is 5. So you got to move this left pointer one step ahead. So can I take 7? So if I take 7, the maximum value that I require is 11 minus 7 plus 1. So that is possible because the value that I get is 5 and 5 is possible to take. So let's take it. So if you take 5 for 7, so what can you take for 8? Applying the similar logic, you can take 5, 4, for your 5, 4, 3, for your 5, 4, 3. So the number of numbers taken over here is 1, 2, 3, 3. So now we are counting for 1 plus 2 plus 3 and over here is single 3. Why single 3? Because you are standing at 7 and you know you can take further 2 numbers because that is the range over here. So you took 2 numbers and after that only 1 was left. So you can cover that number with 3 values that is 5, 4, 3. So that is why the sum range to 1 plus 2 plus 3 that is 6 plus 3. So over here, I know there will be 9 triplets. So now your left pointer is at 7. So you need to understand why does left pointer only moves once. Because once you have found out the answer, so eventually you are increasing 1 over here. So if you are increasing 1, so if you are increasing the left pointer to here by 1, that will satisfy. You don't have to loop and find out where will that satisfy. So we move to 8. So and over here we are at 12. So to satisfy 8, we need x to be 5 because 5 plus 8 will give you more than 12, that is 13. So what are the values that you can take for 8? So you can take 5. For 9, what can you take? 5, 4. For 10, 5, 4, 3. So over here, you are seeing that you are taking 1, 2, 3. And you can see that you are not taking any further extra elements. So you have to take care of these cases. So eventually you add 6 to the answer. So now you're standing at 13. So 8 will not satisfy. You got to move to 9. So you got to take 5 because 9 plus 5 will give you greater than 13. So for 9, you can take 5. For 10, you can take 5, 4. So over here, what I'm seeing is I'm taking one value and two values. So we are not taking all the values. So this is one more boundary case you need to take care of. Previously, we are taking all the elements to the left. But now we can only take one element to the left. Realize this thing. Why? Because you know you are at 5. 
and the remaining numbers were 2. So if you add 2 numbers, you end up at 11. But you know, y can only range between 5 and 10. So you cannot end up at 11. That is why you have to take 1 plus 2. So you have to be very careful when you write the boundary cases. So now you are taking 1 plus 2. That is 3 triplets to answer. So the next step, you stand at 14. And it will stand at 10. So if we compare, what do we need? 10 plus 5 again to get it greater than 14. So for 10, you can take 5. And you cannot take any further values. So you are taking only one values. So there is only one possible triplet that is 5, 10, 14. That adds up to your answer. So at the next step, you move to 15. And you see that 10 is not satisfying. So now you are moving the left pointer. You are moving the y pointer one ahead. So when you are moving this pointer one ahead, this is crossing the boundary. So if this crosses the boundary, you got to break out. Because there is no possible triplet. Assume this would have been 16, 17, 18. So you don't have to unnecessarily loop for it because I've already exceeded Y. So there's no possible triplet. So you can simply break that out. So what if we take this test case? So initially we stand at 11 and our Y pointer stands at 7. So what is the minimum possible value that you need? So the minimum possible value that you need over here is 5 to get it greater than 11. Because 11 minus 7 plus 1 is nothing but 5. So over here we are seeing that we are taking 5. So can we take 5 into consideration? No, because 5 is lesser than 6. So this is where you got to write one more boundary case. That means anytime you are having z minus y plus n greater than a, you got to turn this number x towards a. So now your x stands at 6. So for 7, you can take 6. So since for 7, you can take 6, you can also take 7 for it, right? Because 7 plus 7 can also cross 11. For 8, what can you take? 6 and 7 again. What does this 6 signifies? That means that is the minimum possible value that you need. And all the elements towards the right till its boundary, that means 7 can be taken. So that is why I took 6 and 7. So for 9 and 10, similarly I can take 6 and 7. So over here, you are taking 2 elements. 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 So we saw over here, that there might be a case where you are taking all the possible elements. So you got to take care of that too. So whatever we did in the previous test case, you got to do the same step over here and iterate over. I just wanted to show you that if your x comes to be anything less than or equal to, let's say a, that is 6. So at that case, you got to trim down your x to a. And all the numbers towards it right till b can be taken. So that is what I was trying to show. So what if A was over here, B was over here and you got some X between this and there are three numbers in between. So you can actually take three numbers. Then you can take four numbers. Then you can take five numbers. Given whatever the remaining numbers are over here, like over here, there are four numbers. So you can take three, four, five, six, seven, not eight because at max you can take three. And if you add one more, that makes it four. Add one more, that makes it five. Add one more, that makes it 6. Add one more, that makes it 7. So at max, you can take 4 numbers because on the left, there are only 4 numbers. So this is how you think. So let's understand how can you frame your pseudocode. So you know you have some Z, right? And initially, left pointer is at B. So how can you get the left pointer to be at the correct position? So if I say the possible value of X is nothing but Z minus left plus 1. So if this x lies in this range a and b, so left pointer can stay where it is. If it is not, you increase your left by 1 ahead. And after that step, you again check for this condition. And you keep on checking till this condition is satisfied. So this is how you can move your left pointer. So how do you find the count of numbers? That is, what is the first number? Like over there, we are finding 1, 2, 3. So it might happen initially you are taking two numbers, then three numbers, then four numbers, then five numbers. It can happen in this way. So how do you find what is this starting to and till how much it goes? So assume you are standing at this left. So we know what is the count of numbers in between that. So that can be easily found out by b minus x plus 1. So you know the initial count is b minus x plus 1. That is over here. So this can be as L. So this is L. Now what is your range of R? So assume this as 
something as remaining. So we can say R will be nothing but L plus remaining. Very obvious because if there are two numbers left and you have taken three, so so at next step you take four and at next step you take five. So L is over here, R is over here. So R is five. And if you want to find the sum, it's very easy. You just find out one plus two plus three plus four plus five. Find the sum out and then you subtract one plus two from it. So that is basically sum of R minus sum of L minus one to find this consecutive numbers. So at next step, how do you find till what range L and R goes? So that is again very simple. If you're standing at any given L, so you know what are the count of numbers in between. So you know the count of numbers between R and L is R minus L plus one. So you can add left plus this number. If this exceeds, you can do some maths. And if this does not exceed, it will go up to here, let's say. So you can find this count. Let's say this is XX. So you know, everything over here will be nothing but RRR because this is RRR. So the sum will be XX into RR. And adding to this is the sum of consecutive numbers. So you can easily get it. So this is how you can write your two point approach. So what will be the complexity? The complexity stands at O of N as simple as that, because the first time you get your Y pointer, that is the left pointer. After that, you only move your pointer by plus one because that is also moving by plus one. So that is why the complexity is linear. So let's quickly check out the code. So what I did was I initially took input as A, B, C, D. Then I kept and Z as I, that means I, I traded from C to D. That is my Z pointer. Then I did that condition for moving left, right, that I talked about till I plus one minus left should be greater than B and left should not exceed. So what does this condition left greater than equal to C means? So if you remember, we did a test case where this was going to 11 and this was still standing at 15. So this is for that test case. So at any time it crosses, it simply break out. Then at the next step, I find out what is the minimum value of X that I can find out. So that is nothing but Z minus left plus one. And then I check out if that is less than A. So the edge case that we did, we converted num to be A. And once I've done that, I found out the mid remaining. So mid remaining means if left is this and C is this, I find out this as to be the mid remaining. So once I find out the mid remaining, I found what is the count of numbers. That means num minus A. Means I'm trying to find this out. So I have this. So then I check if left plus count is less than equal to C. So what does that mean? That means I know these many numbers I can take. So if I'm standing over here and I take these many numbers, will this exceed that? So we did a case where there were three numbers to be taken, but we can only take one plus two. So that is this case. At the next step, I find out what is L. So L can be easily find out because I know this is the count of numbers. This is nothing but B minus X plus one. So that is what I've written, right? B minus num plus one. So that is what I've written. So and what will be R? So R will be nothing but whatever is this value and you add count to it. So we have taken R. Now, you know, since it does not cross the boundary, so all the numbers between L and R will be taken. So you simply count and what is remaining? Mid remaining minus count. So what does this mean? So you had a total of mid, right? And you took count numbers. So the remaining values will be occupied by R. So that is what we did, right? We took out the remaining and then we simply multiplied whatever was the value of R that is this B minus A plus one into remaining. Then at the next step, I found out what is the remaining numbers. So what does that mean? If count is this and mid remaining is this. So I know every one of them will be occupied by the total numbers between this. That is nothing but R or you can say B minus A plus one. So I've just added that to answer. Now, what if, this exceeds the boundary. So I can simply find out what is the number of numbers that I'm taking over here. And I know since R exceeds, so the last number will be nothing but L plus mid remaining. So I've added this. And since I know the first and last, I can find out the sum of consecutive numbers in between them. So I've simply find that out. So I just simply find out the sum of numbers between L and R using this function sum. So once I've iterated for all the values of C to D, I print the answer. So this is all about the video. Now let's talk about connecting. If you want to connect me over LinkedIn, this is my profile. If you want to join our Telegram channel, the link is in the description.
If you have liked the video, press the like button. If you have disliked the video, press the dislike button. If you are new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and to press the bell icon.